So a couple of years back, me and my buddies tried to stay in a park after closing time. Our plan was just to take pictures, nothing sinister or anything like that. We just wanted to be able to say we did it, you know? Basically, we snuck from bathroom to bathroom, corner to corner, and managed to stay there until the gates and maintenance team got to work. We were really surprised we hadn't gotten caught. It was almost strange considering how much Disney security guards there are. Our hearts were beating like crazy when we sat there for a while, hiding behind a tombstone by the haunted mansion. We noticed that it's true, the Disney staff had signed their names on every single one. So finally, we got the courage to roam about, still being careful as to not be seen. It was really eerie. The occasional guard or maintenance worker would walk by, and we would just duck or hide behind a corner. It worked for about half an hour. Of course we couldn't keep this up for long. And yeah, they caught us. I mean, give us props for even attempting and succeeding, right? But that's not where the story ends. So the first thing we said when they caught us was, Are you going to take us down to the dungeon? We laughed. The security guard chuckled too. The mood wasn't too dreary. He told us we weren't the first people to try to sneak in after hours, but he wanted to know how we did it. We explained the situation, and he actually laughed and said that wasn't a bad plan. He told us he had to take us to Disney Jail to be further interrogated. Which we thought was odd, but we figured from the beginning that if we had gotten caught, they'd take us down there. It might have been our plan all along. Maybe we wanted to see the Disney catacombs, more than we wanted to see the park after hours. So we called for more workers to come help escort us. We went on our way towards Toontown. Then they took us in this elevator. Right into hell. The first thing we noticed was how expensive looking the elevator was. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's hard to explain. It was like a stainless steel interior with mirrors all around. The floor was fracky, the red carpeting, but it looked expensive. There were only two buttons on the elevator, not counting the emergency buttons. One set up, and the other one set down. I'd forgotten to mention that they have never handcuffed or zip tied our hands. They just kind of walked beside us, expecting we'd follow. Not that we would have tried to make a run for it. <laughs> I mean, these people seem decent. How were we supposed to know what was going to happen? The elevator stopped, and we started walking down this perfectly shining, bleach-smelling corridor. There were no doors on either side. It was just a plain, empty corridor. We walked for what seemed like an eternity, and no one was taking any longer. It was me, my friends, the security guard, and two other maintenance workers. Finally, we reached a heavy metal door with a security code and a reader. One worker put his card in, and the other typed on the keypad. I watched as he typed it in. One, two, one, five, six, six. I only remember it because I found out later what significance that was. <laughs> Makes me laugh looking back at it. Strange. It's strange that I could laugh. They led me and my friends into another corridor. This one had doors down the hallway walls. Each door had a little plexiglass square, a 10 by 10 inch window, and it was at the top right corner. It looked sort of like a psych ward to be honest, but it wasn't even much like a jail. He led us to room 1901, and inside was a single desk with, surprisingly, three chairs for each of my friends, and then they left us alone, closing the door on their way out. We sat in the chairs like obedient little children and waited for them to return. But they never did. Two hours went by, and no one came back for us. My buddy Tim went to the door. Surprisingly, it wasn't locked. He didn't open it, though he was worried that there would be a guard outside waiting for us in case we were trying to escape. And we weren't looking for any more trouble, I can tell you that much. So about 25 minutes went by, and we got restless and finally decided to leave the room. The hallway was empty like before, no signs of people nothing. We started calling out. Hello? Is anybody there? No one answered our calls. We noticed surveillance cameras were placed above every door, and we got wondering if there was any living soul in this place at all. We would have left right then and there, but then again, whoever does the right thing in these kinds of situations? Every door looked the same, and each one had a specific number above it. They weren't in order, like say rooms 1 to 10, there were scattered numbers. For example, our room had 1901, but the door next to it was 1205. 
We had got to thinking and finally assumed that they were just randomly chosen? I don't know. We walked up the hallway and had no idea what we were doing, or where we were going. What we were hoping to find, we didn't even know. And I don't even think it mattered. My other buddy, Guy, decided we should just leave. He said that if we really wanted us here, they'd come back. And maybe, it was just a scare tactic. Maybe they just wanted to trick us into thinking we were being arrested. And they're probably waiting outside for us having a good laugh. I don't know. I felt weary about the whole situation, and Tim was just quiet the whole time, nodding his head here and there. He was more interested in looking into the doors, the little 10 by 10 inch windows. That wasn't a good idea. I tried to tell him, but of course, no one listens to reason. And we were definitely freaked the fuck out at this point. The cameras above the doors were capable of motion detection, and followed us as we wandered down the desolate corridor. A little red light at the bottom of the lens was blinking with each second. No noise filled the air. All we heard was each other breathing. Then, it happened. We reached the end of the hallway. Unfortunately, the door at the end had a pin code reader. I tried the pin from before, the one I saw them type in, but it was invalid. At that moment, the lights in the hallway shut off, and we heard the doors. God damn it. I can still hear them to this day. The fucking doors opened, all lining up along the corridor. They made a subtle creak, and then boom, as they all hit the wall, at the same time, with the same force. As I said, after I entered the invalid code onto the keypad, the lights shut off and the doors opened, except for the door with the keypad. We also noticed that, as the doors opened, each doorway had a little bit of light sweeping from the open pathway. We stood there, stunned for a good five minutes, not knowing what to do. We figured we'd trip some alarm, and that it was just protocol, a standard drill, in case of an attempted escape. What were we supposed to think? So we turned the other direction, away from the locked door. A sense of panic hit all three of us for some reason, and we got the urge to run. No one agreed to running. It was like we all knew we had to, at the same time, like some sort of primal instinct, like a baby gazelle knowing when to run from a lion. We were in a lion's den, all right. It wasn't until the tenth door that we passed that we began to look into the doorways as we passed them. Standing in the doorways were people in costume. We were running past Donald's, Mickey's, Goofy's, and Pluto's, and all different kinds of Disney characters. It was insane, and we screamed at the top of our lungs. I know, it's not the smartest thing. I know they say never look behind you as you run, but I did. They were leaving their rooms and following us, not running, just casually walking. I think that's what made it all the more terrifying. Almost like they knew we had nowhere to go. Now, I don't know if it was all in my head, or just from sheer panic and fear at the moment, but I swear, I swear on my mother's life, I heard It's a Small World playing over the intercom. I have a fear of dolls, and the ride always gave me the creeps my whole life. Now I could see them, little robotic dolls, standing in the doorways as we passed, still following for the costumed characters. The dolls weren't chasing us. Thank God, I would have died from a heart attack if I had seen the dolls following, but they didn't. It didn't make the situation all that better, I mean, how many times were you followed by a group of costumed individuals? seemingly out to eat you alive. Tim was crying, Guy was sweating and breathing heavily, and I just kept turning my head to see if we were being followed. And of course, we were. I'm not sure how many doors we passed at this point, or what characters were at the doors, but I knew this hallway had to end at some point, and I was getting the fuck out of this place pronto. Of course, it's easier said than done. I looked back after another minute or two of running, I noticed that there was nothing behind us anymore, that we could see at least. I heard footsteps, but I figured we'd gotten so far ahead that they were just still walking casually like before. The hallway was still going on for what seemed like forever, and Guy needed to stop or he was going to faint from exhaustion. The door beside us was open, with the light on, but nothing inside. I decided we should go hide in a place till we caught our breath and that we could continue forward. As we closed the door behind us, we noticed the room was 1966. Again, 
This meant nothing at the time. Tim was pacing in the room. Guy was laying on the floor, still breathing pretty hard. And I was at the window, looking out. I saw nothing. No more music. No nothing. It was dark. And hard to tell for sure. But I figured I would have seen figures, shadows, something. Still, I kept watch. After 15 minutes or so, Guy was good to go. Tim was the only one smart enough to pull out his new Razor cell phone, and no signal. Of course. He opened the door subtly, quietly, but heard no footsteps. Nothing was following us anymore. But we weren't taking chances. We got back to running. It was only another seven minutes to reach the door, give or take. It had no keypad, and it was open. We entered the corridor from before, and thank God... There were no doors. We ran for the elevator and got in and pushed up. And then we stood there, looking at each other, dumbfounded, as to what had just happened. None of us spoke. We all just waited till the elevator opened, back into Toontown, and started our way to the front gate. We kept a low profile, using the same duck and hide technique that had gotten us far before. Finally, Tim lost it and took off in a sprint. I couldn't imagine what set him off until I looked and saw everyone in the park. They just stood there. They were staring at us with blank faces. We heard our voice over the intercom, explaining that three fugitives just escaped from captivity and needed to be escorted back to the jails below. We booked it, catching up to Tim. The costumed characters appeared from the shadows, workers and guards chasing after us. Everyone was sprinting for us. I couldn't see that well, but I imagined drool dripping down their jowls. They wanted us back down there. We had escaped, and they were pissed. The gate was just up ahead. The creepiest thing about it was besides the voice over the intercom, the park was dead silent. No chat from the workers. Even now, as we were running for what we assumed was our lives, from the characters, workers, the guards, no one bothered to shout out for us. No one yelled stop. Nothing. Just footsteps and an occasional cough from Guy. As we made it past the park's front gate, we didn't stop until we got to the parking lot. Our car was gone. We were left scratching our heads. We continued running down the road, which went on for miles, stopping occasionally to catch our breath, until we made it to a little corner store. Then, then Tim called a taxi. When it finally arrived, we took the cab back to the hotel where we were staying at, paid the fare, and went up to our rooms. On the end of the day, we got a call from the hotel's front desk, so we headed downstairs. There were the officers waiting for us. They said that our car had been impounded and we needed to pay the fine. They didn't ask us any other questions. We didn't bother telling the police what happened. <laughs> Even now, on this random board, people who don't have reason to disbelieve me, don't believe me. So how can the officer of the law be expected to? So we didn't bother. We simply paid the fine and drove home. We didn't talk about what happened. The whole drive back. It wasn't until a couple weeks later that I got myself to search up the numbers. I don't know, I got bored and curiosity. As you all know, Walt Disney was born December 5th, 1901. The room we were in was 1901. And the door next to us was 1205. Also, he decided December 15th, 1966. Which was the key code the worker had to put in to lead us to the main corridor. What a strange coincidence. Whether any of that was real at all, I couldn't tell you. Maybe our imaginations ran wild. <laughs> we were tired. It was around 1am when we made our escape. So it is a plausible answer. I'll never forget it though. And I haven't been back since.